wood for the cubby kettle. And a little tea. Today's been pretty decent. Had a few showers, but um, yesterday it uh, poured rain all day and it's extremely high winds. So it could be challenging to find dry wood when you're using wood to cook, but there's always something. So here we are under a pine tree. Lord, branches are almost always dead on the pine. See how dry that is? That's where I can get my firewood from, but I only need really just little the finer twigs. In fact, most of this bigger stuff I probably won't even burn. Because the Kelly kettle needs so little fuel. But, um, it's really a sustainable choice because I don't need camp fuel. And it only really needs the, like I said, the debris if the forest floor was drier. I'd just be using all of this stuff. Dead leaves, little branches, especially pine cones, pine needles. All of that would be fine. And the fire only really needs to burn for a few minutes. You can see all the dead, dead branches on the bottom of this tree. So the bottom, the tree protects the, uh, stops as much water from falling on it. So there's less water falling on these lower branches, and they are very, very dry. So. I'll collect a few of these and I'll get a fire going and cut my lunch and then I gotta just sit back and get out of here. So I just finished collecting a little bit of firewood. Normally we just grab little stuff off the forest floor like that. Leaves and some pine needles, but it's been pouring rain for a few days. And it's November, the sun's not very hot, and it's low in the sky, so a lot of the... Uh, this section of the lake doesn't get much sun anyway, so... Not a lot of dry stuff. Kelly kettle only needs a few twigs to boil up some water, and that's what I'll do. I'll get some water boiling and have some lunch. And actually, if it was raining today, I would use my saw, cut some of these, cut some bigger dry logs, and then uh, baton them with the knife, which is why I carry a bigger knife, so that the uh, I can use the split wood in the center of the wood is actually going to be dry no matter how wet it is inside. boiling already. So I'm going to do two. This one only holds about 500 milliliters, which is, that's two cups, which is about the right amount for uh, one of these uh, packs of dehydrated food. This is Southwestern Cusco Organic by uh, Mary James Farm Outpost. So you just expand that. That's the uh, cooking, cooking vessel and the eat it out of. So like I said, because this because this only holds two cups of water, the, all of that will go into there and then for tea I'll just pull another uh, kettle full of water, but it only takes a few minutes and I don't have to carry any stove fuel.
It's now uh, 2.41. Just finished lunch. I'm getting ready to pack up. Just let that burn down, then I'll pull that off in the water. So it's going to leave me about uh, two hours to get back to the truck before dark. I was here, but I did stop to take pictures and look at the scenery, so I'm going to have to head straight back. Anyway, I am prepared. If, uh, if I was stuck out here overnight, if I fell down and got hurt and couldn't walk out or something, not overly prepared, but I was going to demonstrate, demonstrate this uh, new water filter that I just picked up because I got Giardia a few weeks ago from a faulty filter or water treatment. So, had three liters in the uh, bladder here. Probably going to finish that uh, just hiking, just drinking while I hike. And uh, this would have come in handy to refill it. Or, and I also have these micro, micro pure tablets here as well. But if I was stuck here for the night, I've got a little bit of extra food. I've got two energy bars, maybe three, yeah, three. So there's 750 calories, some vitamin C, which I find helps on a trip like this. Uh, you're wearing down your vitamins and minerals. Got a black diamond headlamp. Got some towelettes, moist towelettes, wet wipes. Got a hat. Uh, neck warmer. A dickie that can also go over my head as a as a uh, hat at night. And then in here, got my Eddie Bauer 850 filled down um, down vest, and then a mountain equipment co-op raincoat in there as well that has a hood. So if I was stuck out here for the night, if I put that got my warm uh, sweater on, I've got a wool shirt underneath that. I've got a wool sweater on, got the down jacket, down vest, the rain jacket to hold the heat in, got a hat, I've got some gloves, actually got some rope, first aid kit, and a saw in there as well, so I could make an emergency shelter fairly quickly. Anyway, if I was uh, in the right spot, with or without a fire, fire would be nice, but even without a fire, with all that extra clothing on, it would be quite fine. And the temperature's only going down to plus two or three tonight, so I wouldn't have found that too difficult to deal with. Anyway, shouldn't have to if I, uh, assuming I'm careful and I don't slip on any rocks, I should make it back to the truck by dark. And if I'm a little bit later, I use the headlamp. The uh, red light on the headlamp's good for hiking. Apparently, there's some good sized wolves in the area. That was the fourth grouse, rough grouse, that uh, took off from right beside the trail as I walked by. So, just wanted to see what he was in here eating. I guess it's the, uh, the juniper berries, which I like to eat too. I cook with them. So yeah, there's a few left. That was, yeah, there's quite a bit on, quite a few berries left on the uh, junipers. So that's a good winter food for rough grouse and other birds. sign down there says shortcut and all written above it says shortcut to narrows so that trail goes loops south but if you take that shortcut which is what I did the narrows they're talking about is where McCray Lake empties out into Georgian Bay so that's where I was headed I went and had lunch on the shore of uh, McCray Lake but pretty much right where it joins Georgian Bay so I'm not sure how long a along the loop adds on to the uh, time to get out there. I'll have to check that out.